But Philippians chapter number 3, let's read, I'll read verses 11 through 15. The Bible says here, if, any man, if, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after if they, that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things, unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded, and if, and if in anything we be, ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Uh, I don't know I, what to title this. Um, you know, it could be, uh, could be, uh, you know, keep, stay focused. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, um, when it's time to get on with your life. It could be many things, but, but you'll understand the truth here as we get going here. And let's pray, Lord, please help me, I pray. Please, Lord, just bless, I beg of you, please, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, Paul has penned this epistle, uh, most likely during his imprisonment in Rome, all right? Uh, uh, if you study Paul's life, you'll find that he lived a very dramatic life up to this point. I mean, very dramatic. Uh, Paul went from being a leader of the Jews, uh, from his, I mean, he was trained uh, through childhood, he went through the best had the best teaching was uh, a leader of the jews uh in fact uh, his zeal was such that he did his dead level best to hinder the cause of christ I and mean, that's what that's how that's how fervent he was in this and how uh, in such uh so he went from that to literally giving his life for christ all right so paul went from one extreme um and then got saved and went from that uh and then and then turned his uh life around and served uh, and gave his life for Christ. So he went from one extreme completely to the other. Now, uh, I'm sure that Paul had many fond memories of the good times he had while serving the Lord. I, I, I can't hardly believe that he didn't. Uh, in fact, if you read some of his letters, you could tell that some of the relationships that he had uh, and, and that sort of thing. It was certainly something that Paul was not, uh, didn't, you know, that he enjoyed. It was something that there's a lot of good times uh, during the ministries and such. However, uh, if you were to read the book of Acts and in Corinthians, you'll see that Paul went through some very terrible times, and he went through them uh, 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 some before and and mostly after his salvation. That's recorded uh, at least in the book of uh, Acts and Corinthians. In fact, if you go to Second Corinthians, you don't have to. Uh, in, in verses uh, uh, chapter eleven, twenty-three through twenty-eight. Paul lists some things that that uh, that happened to him. He says, "Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. Am I? I am more in labors, more abundant in stripes above measure in pres prisons, more frequent in deaths, often of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with the rods. Uh, once I was stoned. Thrice I was suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep." in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the, the, by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches." So um, Paul went through many, many great hardships as he was serving God. I mean, think about uh, some of the stuff it, it frequently put in prison. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I just I, some of the stuff I can't fathom. Uh, you know, to, and such and, and and things to have to go through uh, and such and to go through for the cause of Christ. I mean, to be put in jail frequently, um, to receive uh, uh, thirty-nine strikes five different times. Folks, you know, you, you, uh, how, many, how many remember uh, as a child, uh, I don't know about you all, but I grew up in a day when, when uh, uh, you know, my parents, uh, when they did spank me, uh, you know, it, it was with a paddle or, or if, there was a, if there was a switch, we, they went out and got a switch off the tree. 
I mean, that's that's how that's how I was raised. It was, and 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 they didn't, you know, uh, they weren't uh, uh, too awfully worried about what it, you know how big it was or anything like that. They were they were they were they're going to go grab a switch. And sometimes they said, "Hey, you go pick one out." <laughs> if I came back with a little one, it wasn't a good thing, you know. But, the, but anyway, you know, I, I, you know, I didn't like it. I, I remember it, you know. I remember uh, and that sort of thing. But can you imagine five different times receiving uh, forty stripes, save one? Five different times. Um, uh, he was beaten with rods three different times. Uh, he was stoned and left for dead. Uh, he was uh, in three different shipwrecks. Three different shipwrecks. I, I, uh, I can't remember who I was talking. It must have been my youngest yesterday. We were out visiting and things and, and, and things. He was talking about maybe going on a cruise or something or, or whatever. And, uh, or going in this hotel where you're, you're actually, it's on top of water. And you, you know, you open it up and the water's down underneath you and stuff. I said, man, I wouldn't want that at all. I said, that I just would not sleep. I just, I, you know, cruises and stuff like that, being out in the, in the ocean. There's something about the ocean that gives me the wee beach. I just don't like it. I don't like the ocean. Uh, there's too many things out there to kill you. Uh, and, and they want to eat you, you know, uh, and, and that sort of thing. I, and, and I just don't like it. But can you imagine, Paul, uh, going through a shipwreck, just one, but not just one, but three different times? Can you imagine having to float all day and all night in the ocean? Can you imagine uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the, how frightened he must have been, how cold he must have been, how, uh, how, all the stuff that he had gone through? Now, Paul here is writing to the church at Philippi. He's trying to encourage them and exhort them to keep on keeping on for the Lord. Uh, Paul, uh, if you were to, uh, uh, to study uh, this you'll find that Paul had a lot invested in this church uh, and such uh, Paul helped found this church during his second missionary journey uh, and such and uh, this church was not a big church it was not uh, a, a, a big church and such it was a smaller church but Paul was hoping to one day go back and visit them and such and he makes a statement here in verse number 13 that's followed by probably one of the most popular exhortation verses in the Bible. I mean, it is one of the most and, and such. But what I want us to do this morning is I want us to concentrate on the statement he made in verse number 13. Because I believe myself, I believe personally that this statement was probably one of the secrets to Paul's success in his service for God. Paul had a rough past. He had to experience some things that we uh, uh, probably will never have to face. Yet Paul always kept the faith. It seems as if he just kept on going. Uh, now, maybe Paul's life verse was verse 14. I don't know. But I believe in the, can, the key to, to uh, fulfilling verse number 14 is grasping the truth that's found in verse number 13. All right. In verse number 13, it says, Brethren, I cut not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. In other words, here's what Paul's saying. He's saying, he's saying, brothers, I don't consider myself to reach the point in my life in which I've done as much as I can do. I haven't, I haven't got there yet. I haven't attained that yet. All right. However, uh, he's saying, let me give you the truth that helps me as I, I try to obtain the mark for the prize. Uh, the secret to, to me serving God after all that has happened to me is this. He's saying, I am forgetting those things which are behind and I'm going forward towards my mark uh, in life. Uh, you know, he's saying, look, I know I've had it rough, but I refuse to let my past stop me from obtaining my mark. In other words, Paul is saying there's, you know, all these things in my life, all these things and such, uh, 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 I, I've got to come to a point in my life where there's a goal that, uh, that, that I have for my life. Uh, I, I want to serve God. I want to, uh, there's a mark I want to make. There's a prize I want to obtain. And, and uh, uh, I, in order to do that, the, one of the keys to being able to do that is there are sometimes those things in my past, I have got to let go. Those things in my past, I've got to to, uh, uh, to not let them slow me down. I've got, I've got to let them go. He's saying, look, I have a race to run. I have a mark to hit. I have a prize to obtain. The, the prize to obtain is the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
And you, you know, if you think about it, we as Christians are also in this race. If you, uh, if you were to look at Hebrews 12, uh, uh, 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily so beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So we too are in a race. We are just like Paul. Now we're not, uh, you know, we didn't, uh, uh, you know, Jesus didn't talk to us on the road to Damascus. We didn't have the history maybe that Paul had. But as a Christian, we are put in this race. As a Christian, as a saved person, we have been put in this race. And so we too uh, are to be, uh, uh, are in this race. And, and the word patience there in Hebrews 12, 1 means endurance. Endurance during hardships or persecutions. That's what that word patience means there. Uh, and such, you know, the, we use patience today. It means something different. You know, it's like uh, uh, you tell your kids, be patient, be patient, be patient. Uh, but, but this means endurance. It means endurance under hardships, endurance and such. All right. So uh, if we as Christians then want to hit that mark for, for the prize, then we at certain times in our lives must say, you know what? I've got to get on. I've got to continue on. I've got to get on with my life. I have a mark to hit. I have a prize to earn. I have to keep going on for God. Because if I stop too long, I might not reach the mark. There are some things in life that will happen that will set you back. It's the way life is. I don't care how uh, holy you might think you are, how good, uh, uh, and no one's good, by the way. There's none righteous, no, not one, uh, and such. But I don't care, uh, you know, you could read your Bible every day and pray every day and, and have all your ducks in a row and everything else. But I got news for you. Life is that way. Everybody's going to go through hardships in life. We're all going to do that. Well, it's all going to, it's going to happen. That's just part of life. So the things that will happen that will set us back. Or there'll be things that'll happen that, that will knock us off course. You remember, who are we fighting against here? We're fighting against Satan. Satan, Satan knows what he's doing and Satan wants to get us uh, either. Uh, uh, he knows we're in a race. He knows what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what needs to be accomplished. And Satan's going to do his dead level best to, make, uh, to get us to look back and, 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 and stop the race. Or to look over and, and run out of line. Uh, this last week, there was a couple uh, of, of, I think it was even Americans, that, that, that stepped out of line when he was running track and field. And because he stepped on line, even though he was crowded uh, out doing that, uh, and he, he was disqualified because he stepped out of line. Now, the truth of the matter is, uh, what Satan wants us to do is he wants us to get so worried and so caught up in, uh, in, in, in the things that have been passed or, or, or uh, start getting focused on some things off to our right or our things off to our left or whatever it might be that we, we, uh, we lose sight of the mark. We lose sight of the mark uh, and such. The key to hitting our mark is when these things happen... We don't let them stop us from obtaining that prize. They might slow you down, but don't lose your momentum. They might throw you off course, but you must get to a point where you're refocused. You refocus on the mark. There comes a point in our lives when things happen and we can't change them. And when those things happen and we can't change them, it's time that we got to say, you know, okay, it's done. It's history. I have to get on with my life. I cannot stay uh, and, and, and stay idle long. I have to keep going. I have a prize to obtain uh, and such. And, 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 uh, uh, and you'll never obtain your prize if you never get over your past. I, as your pastor, my goal for every one of you and my prayer for every one of you is that you will obtain that prize. That's my goal. I want that for you. I, I, I want that. I, 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 I would feel that uh, uh, I would feel uh, will feel badly if I failed in giving you what you needed. I would feel badly if I if, if I failed in, in, in guiding you and directing you and trying to help you uh, and such and giving you everything you needed uh, to make sure that you were well equipped to, to, to hit your mark, to obtain your prize. I want, I want that for everybody, I, everybody under, uh, under my book. I want you to hear like, the, the, like she played in that song, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want you to hear that. I want that for you. I want that and, and such. 
And so uh, uh, I, I, uh, I want to help you this morning to help you to uh, when things happen in life, to give you some things that when they happen in life, you got to say, OK, it's done. It's over. I've got to keep going. I can't let this throw me off. I can't let this hold me back because I want you to run the race. I want you to win the prize. I want you to hit the mark. And so I want to give you some things this morning that can help you with this. And when these things happen in life, because they will. These things that I'm going to give you, I promise you, uh, the longer you live, the, the, it's going to happen. It's just going to happen. It's just the way, uh, it, like, way life is, right? All right, so let me give them to you this morning uh, and such. Um, uh, some things to do uh, when they happen and, and to say, you know what, it's time to get on. I've got to let it go. All right. Number one, when mistakes are made, when mistakes are made, um, our kids. And, and I, I think you could if you were to ask them, you would find out that when they did make mistakes uh, and, and it was a paddling offense, what we did was we we uh, um, we would send them to the room. We would kind of calm down a little bit and prepare ourselves. We would go in there and we tell them and discuss what had happened and all that stuff. And then, uh, and then uh, we would spank them, uh, tell them we loved them, and 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 uh, give them a hug. And when when we shut the door and walked out of the room, it was over. You ask our kids, it was over. It was it was done. It was over, uh, and such. And many times, we we as people, many times when we make well, you know uh, make mistakes and such. We live and, and we go back to those all the time. We go back to those all the time. We relive those all the time. And what that's doing is becoming a stumbling block. What that's doing is, is it's, it, it, uh, uh, you know, it becomes a, some, a point where if you're all constantly going back to that, you're not going forward. Uh, and so, um, you know, when mistakes are made, you know, when, when uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, things said, I remember this week, uh, we were, we were, I was playing, a, we were, my wife and I were playing a game with my son, and I'm telling you my sins this week, uh, but uh, uh, we were playing a game with my grandson, and I think, I can't remember if Jessica was there or not, but anyway, I said something, that wasn't, wasn't terrible uh, in such, I can't remember what I said now, but uh, uh, I hope you don't remember because you do. That's just going to blow my illustration. But uh, but uh, uh, but uh, uh, you know. Uh, but she's you know. And and uh, and I don't know. If it was my grandson who's uh, be ten here coming up, or or my daughter says, you know, that wasn't nice or whatever. And uh, and uh, and so uh, you know, I said, okay. I, I, I said, yeah, you're right, uh, honey. I'm sorry. I should never have said that. All right. Now the truth of the matter is, after that happened, then that should be it. It should be it. That should be done, okay? We all do that. How many has never in their life, never, never, never in their life, said something they should have never said? <laughs> yeah, right. I hear you. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, none of you know, I don't care. We're all human. All right? We're all human. There is no way, there is no way that you can have uh, uh, and, and deal with other people and be around other people all, all the 168 hours a, a week or whatever it is and, 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 and not say something to somebody you should not have said. You shouldn't. It, it, it's it's going to happen. It's just, it's just because we're not, we're not perfect. So what we have to do though is we, when that happens, we need to not dwell on it. We need to not make our lives miserable. I know people that that uh, you know that, that had dwelled on things that have been that were said years and years and years and years before. Yeah, you know, I counsel sometimes with uh, 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 you know married couples and such, and and uh, maybe they'll they'll uh, they'll come up and say, well, you know, you don't know what he said. This I said, really? When did he say that? Well, twenty five years ago. You've been carrying that for twenty five years. The truth of the matter is, we, we, we have to understand this, when we make mistakes, when mistakes are made, whether it's something we said, whether it's something we've done, uh, whatever it might be, we can't dwell on that. We can't dwell on that. We get it right, we take care of it, and then, and then because you can't change them, you can't take back those words. You can't do that. You know, it's not like when you're a kid, you know, you'd say, uh, you, you know, you'd say something mean to one of your friends. Oh, I take it back. I take it back. You can't take it back. It's done. It's over. It's happened. 
So what you've got to do then is you've got to say, okay, I can't change those mistakes uh, and such. I can learn from them and I can be better because of them uh, and such, but I cannot dwell on those anymore. I can't do that because I have a, a mark to hit. I have a prize to obtain and I can't let them keep me down. I can't let them keep me down. I can't let them get me off track. Uh, I've got a race to run. I've got a prize to obtain. Uh, I've got a mark to hit if I'm going to hit make that prize. And so we need to you need to take when those mistakes are made. You need to get them done, get them over with and move on with your life. I think of another one that I've I've seen in, in years gone by in a ministry is is uh, uh, the death of a loved one. I've seen years people for years and years and years. I don't talk about grieving because that happens. I, my dad died uh, when I in 2004. Uh, in fact, it's coming up here uh, here coming up uh, the, for, uh, two days before Thanksgiving in 2004. Now, I, I when things come up, sometimes I still I still grieve for my dad. I still miss my dad. Uh, my brother died in 2008 here this in September. A motorcycle crash. He was uh, uh, um, on the road. Um, 41 going from uh, Avon to uh, to Abington there on, on 41. Killed in a motorcycle crash. Every time I go by where he was killed, uh, and, and whoever's in the car, they probably get tired of it. I say, well, that's where my brother was killed. That's where my brother was killed. But now, wait a minute. I, I, you know, I'm not saying you get over it. I'm saying don't let it get you down. I'm saying you can't. You, you, there comes a point in your time in your life where you got to say, you know what? I can't change that. So I've got to go on with life. You know, my dad and my brother would not want me to dwell on that. They would not want me to dwell on that. They would not want me to just, uh, uh, you know, to shut down my life and continue. There would become a point in, uh, in, 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 you know, that they would say, you know what? You, 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 okay, you, you, you've mourned and, and such. Now I want you to go on with life. I want you to get, uh, keep on going with life. I want you to go on with life because you know what? There, there's a lot more of life that you have left. There's a lot more things that you can do. There's a lot more things that can, uh, that can go on. So don't dwell on, on these things and such. Uh, and so, uh, you know, be careful. I know people that, that uh, still be, get depressed. Get depressed because one of their, uh, maybe their parent or something that has died, you know, uh, 15, 20, 30 years ago. And every anniversary day, they get depressed and down. You can't do that, folks. You can't do that. Uh, it's not healthy uh, and such. You, you, you've got to, you know, even in the Bible, you realize in the Bible that they had a certain amount of time for mourning and then that was it. In the, that's what they did. Even when, remember when, when uh, was it Jacob that, that died? And they took him to, uh, uh, and, and uh, they took him back into, eat, uh, back into, uh, into Canaan and, and buried him. And that they mourned for I think 40 days or something like that. I have to look it up, but they mourned for a certain amount of time and then they and then they then they came back. But there's a there ought to be a grieving time. I'm not talking about that and, and I get sad and stuff and have some and think about uh, uh, about them and such but I can't let that get me down. I can't let that stop me from doing what God wants me to do with my life. I'm in a race. You're in a race. And we've got to make sure that we continue on uh, with our life. I think of another thing that I've, I've seen over the years is broken dreams. Broken dreams. You know, I think of uh, married couples a lot of times who, um, you know, end up um, after the kids are out of the house and all that stuff. And they end up getting a divorce. And, and, I, and I've, had, I've counseled with some of them and, say, and they'd say, you know, I never would have dreamt I'd be in this situation this time in my life. And you know what? I, and I understand that. And it's and it's and it's very disheartening. It's very sad uh, when those things happen. But I've seen some of them where they just go into a state of depression. I see some of them where they just they just they just stop their life and and, and they and they just can't let go and they can't go on. I May mean, I tell you, those are the things that that uh, uh, that uh, you've got to say. You know what? That maybe that was not the dream I had when I was younger. Maybe this where I'm at today is not where I thought we would be, you know, 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 40 years ago. Maybe that's not. But don't let it get you down. Don't let it uh, uh, pull you back. Don't let it get you sidetracked. 
uh, and such. Because you are still alive. You are still uh, in the race. You are still uh, uh, supposed to be uh, heading and, and trying to get to that prize. Trying to hit that mark to, uh, to have that prize. Don't let those things get you down. I think of another time in your life where it's the end of an era of life. I think of, uh, you know, some, some people, you know, hit 40 years old, so, especially you ladies. 40 years old for a lot of you ladies is just a very depressing time. I think of some of them just really go through some really, really, really low things. Praise the Lord. You're 40 years old. Praise the Lord. You made it 40 years. You know, uh, a lot of people didn't make it that long. Uh, oh, my life is, is uh, half over. Well, you don't know that. I got news for you. It might, you might, it might be, it might be ninety nine point nine percent over because you might die tomorrow. <laughs> That's, you say you're morbid. No, I'm trying to be realistic. That's the way a life is. Don't spend time on something like that. Don't don't let those things get you down. Don't do that. My goal, and I and I hope God allows me to do it, is to be able to get at least one Social Security check. I, I, that's my goal. He said, that's terrible. No, that's that's my goal. I want to be able to at least get one Social Security check from the government. I at least want to do that. And it's going to be my luck. By the time I hit it, they're going to be broke. And we won't have it. Uh, but uh, but at least I'll, I'll say, you know what? At least I got to that point. You know? Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, you know, you can't let those things uh, get you down. I think of uh, an ear, you know, when the kids leave the nest. The empty nest syndrome. Uh, let, let me tell you something. Our kids now, our youngest, how old are you? 27. 20, he's 27. Let me tell you something. There is no such thing as an empty nest syndrome. <laughs> okay? Because guess what happens? They get married and they have kids. And guess what? Those kids are your grandkids. Guess what? Uh, you will, you will, they will be around. I'm thankful for it. I praise the Lord for that. But the truth of the matter is, uh, you know what? Uh, there is no empty nest. We, we look forward to it uh, and stuff when the, when the kids were out and everything else and, and stuff. We look forward. When all our kids were in college and, and, and one of them was married and the other two were in college and stuff, it was fun. We had fun. You know, uh, you know, we could do whatever we wanted. We could play, you know, play games. We could do whatever uh, and that sort of thing. We had a good time. It was fun. There was no such thing as an empty nest. Look, but there's some people, they dread it. They dread it. Oh my, oh my, I'm, I'm going to have to talk to my wife now. You know, I'm going to have to carry on a conversation. Yeah, it won't hurt. It won't hurt. Look, don't, 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 uh, don't let those things get you down uh, and such. And then uh, even disappointments. Don't let disappointments get you down. You know, um, people are going to disappoint you. People are going to disappoint you. Whether it's the, you know, and sometimes the sad thing is those that you love the most sometimes are the ones that hurt the worst when they disappoint you. And I know, you know, kids will disappoint you. Friends can disappoint you. Family people will disappoint you. And unfortunately, even church people will disappoint you. And when they do, you've got to understand we're dealing with imperfect people. We're dealing with imperfect people and we are we are the chiefest of imperfect people. And that's what you got to look at. You know, that's like Paul said, I, I'm the chief. I'm the chief sinner. Now, the truth of the matter is, uh, you've, you've got to. I know people now who will not go into church and will not go to church at all. They, 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 they know they're saved and everything else. But they said, you know what? I'm never going to church again because uh, so and so did this. You know, so and so did that. And they and they become bitter. And they become angry and they're out of the race now. They're out of the race. And that's so sad. Because when they meet the Lord, there's it, most likely they're not going to hear, well done, I've been a faithful servant. Because they did not finish the race. Don't let disappointment, don't let the disappointments in life get you down. Don't do it. Realize, you know what? Uh, you've, you've disappointed others too. I know as a child there were times when I disappointed my mom and dad. I know there have been times where I disappointed my, 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 my sister and brother. I honestly never, never, never would, uh, I don't think I ever intentionally would do it, but we did. I remember when my dad died, my brother, my brother 
was uh, he was my stepbrother, uh, half brother, and uh, uh, my mom and dad were married for 15 years, and uh, and then my my brother and my dad uh, they just didn't you know after the divorce and stuff um, you know my brother just didn't want to have anything to do with dad and, and it was kind of awkward and stuff and uh, and and when dad died when dad died in the obituary and stuff I when we were putting stuff down I never thought to even mention my brother never thought about it I mean they hadn't talked to one another for 50 years I never even thought to, thought about it and I remember at the graveside service it was cold and I remember uh, sitting there with my sister and the family huddled underneath the tent it was really cold and I remember as uh, one of the, uh, the guys was singing Amazing Grace uh, I remember looking over the corner of my eye and my brother and his his uh, wife come around the tent and and uh, and 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 stood there. I remember my heart just broke. And I'm thinking, how could I have forgotten? How could I have forgotten? It wasn't intentional. See, we all we all make mistakes, folks. We all do things that we wish we could take back. So when someone does something to you that way, think about what you've done to others that way. And learn to forgive and don't dwell on it. Learn to forgive and just let it go. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is it's going to either throw you off. And you're going to switch lanes and get called out of the race. Or it's going to get you back here. To where you're, you're, you're dwelling on the past that cannot be changed. And you're going to become bitter. You're going to become... Um, uh, mad at people, mad at God, mad at, at uh, uh, and such. And, and all this time, life is going on. Your life is going on while you're there. You realize that. You realize your life, even though you're here and, 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 and soaking about the past, even though you're there soaking, your life is still going on. That race is still happening. And what's happening is you're back here when you should be moving forward in the race. You should be moving forward in the race. Look. Don't let things that you cannot change keep you from attaining your prize. Everybody that's saved needs to be shooting for the mark for the prize. And when Satan throws that dart, and he will, take the blow Go on and continue serving the Lord. Have that healing time. Have that time of mourning. Have those times. But then get back up and go on for God. Because life still goes on. Don't let circumstances either cause you to get off track or lose focus. So you'll not reach that mark. You remember, any of you take driver's ed, I think most of you in here did. Remember, I don't know if they taught you this. I remember in driver's ed, they taught us. They said, now when you're driving down the road and someone is passing you or you're passing them, look forward. Don't look at them. Because if you do, where do you have a tendency to go? And what happens many times in life, and that's what the devil tries to do, is he tries to get us off the mark. Focus on others. That's why David said, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. You gotta get back to the book, get back to the work. You gotta get back to, to what God's will is for your life. Don't let circumstances and things in life get you off focus. Don't let circumstances in life and things that you cannot change in your past stop you and turn you around. Paul said this in 2 Timothy. He said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He said, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. 
I promise you folks, that's what I want for every one of you. That's what I want. And I believe that every one of you do too or you probably wouldn't be here today. But I guarantee you things in life are going to happen. And Satan's going to do everything he can to get you either to turn back and stop or to go to the left or to the right and get off the mark. But you've got to do like Paul did and say, you know what? This one thing I do do, I forget about the things which are behind and I press forward. Because I have a mark to hit because when I hit that mark, there's a prize waiting for me. The high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And let's pray. Your Heavenly Father, I thank you all for your goodness. Lord, I pray you please just help, Lord. I... Lord, it, it, you know my heart. It saddens me when I see Christians, Lord, that, that, that get uh, off the mark. And they, whether to the right or to the left, or, or they just start, just stop and go back. Lord, because their life is still going on. Life around them is still going on. The race is still being run. Lord, please. Help us, Lord, please, to continue to stay focused on you. No matter what goes on in our life, no matter what kind of hardships, no matter what might be, even good times can throw us off, Lord. So, Lord, please help us to stay focused. Help us, Lord, please, to continue every day to say, you know what, I've, my God has got me in the race today. I've got to run the race. And one day, that race will be done. And Lord, please, I pray that when that's done, I pray every one of us in here will hear that high calling from you.